But anyway, so believe it through repentance. Listen, three things. These are very important because I have to realize these things and come to the realization of them. And you need to come to the realization of them too. First of all, unbelief is the evidence of unconfessed sins. Your unbelief that you struggle with during this COVID-19, that unbelief is due to unconfessed sins because if there are sins in your life that you don't confess, they wear your faith down and put you in a place where you don't fully believe. So when trials and tribulations and crisis and corona and all these things come, your belief gets tested and you got to lean on somebody else's belief. You go to calling folks to check what you think. Because you feel some kind of way. Your belief isn't really where it should be. That's because unconfessed sin messes with your belief. The longer you walk in sins or live in sorriness for sins, you know being sorry is not repenting, right? Without true repentance, the harder it will be for you to believe in this hour. So this is the hour where God has locked us in our homes so we can come face to face with our behavior. You can't hide your behavior when it's just you in your house. You can't hide your behavior bumping into walls and passing mirrors all day. So God put us in our houses or allowed this situation, excuse me, to put us in our houses so that we could see ourselves. Because in this hour, unbelief is not going to work. So we got to get rid of unconfessed sins. We got to confess our sins. We got to come face to face with all our stupidness. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The second thing, the wages of sin is death. Not just physical death, all death. So it's physical, spiritual, and get this, God was showing me this, emotional death. The wages of sin is emotional death as well. There are a lot of people sick right now because of emotional death. They wouldn't have even caught COVID-19 if they weren't so emotionally dead. Because that's what sin does. Sin will kill you emotionally. It gets harder and harder for you to face yourself when you have sin in your life. Physical, spiritual, and emotional. Emotional death leads to despair and woe is me mindsets. That's emotional death. What is woe is me? Woe is me is when every time you pray, you can't muster up hope or help for anyone but yourself. Why me? It's when you become your own idol and always considering yourself before God and others. That's emotional death. That means that you can't help anyone because you're your own focus. So the wages of sin is physical death, spiritual death. We know that from Adam and Eve, but it's also emotional death. You don't want to emotionally die because then you stop completely caring about other people. And when you stop caring about other people, you're no good to the kingdom. Because the kingdom is all about other people. Laying down yourself. No greater love than this than a man would lay down his own life for someone else. You know, that was... That was the thing that made me afraid to pastor more than anything else. I did not want to pastor. My wife will tell you, kicking and screaming, the Lord called me. I avoided it because I watched my daddy go through stuff, pastoring that I did not want to go through. And God pushed me out here to give you this word and to lead you as a flock. I didn't want to do it. And the reason I didn't want to do it is because I know me. 
I'm 100% empathetic. I will care when I shouldn't. And folks would treat me like trash and I would still love them. So I didn't want to do it. But some folks have this woe is me to the point to where they will destroy everything in their path so somebody will feel sorry for them. This is the path to new age ideologies and knowledge of self. This is that junk, this is that burning sage stuff where folks trying to find themselves and knowledge of themselves and they start out with the Lord and they end up with a snake. Next time you see them, they got half an afro and half plaits wearing a dashiki and some gym shorts. You don't know what happened to them. But they went on a quest to find themselves. Because woe is me. I was raped. I was molested. I was abandoned. My parents divorced. My mama worked all the time and didn't spend time loving me. My daddy didn't want to have nothing to do with us. Life dealt me a terrible hand. Somebody feel sorry for me. But Matthew 24 and 12 says, and because iniquity shall abound, which is sin, the love of many in this day is going to do what? It's going to wax cold because they're only loving themselves. I had somebody email me, oh man, your messages have just changed. You ain't hardcore dissing folks and going after and just what happened? Why are you preaching just repentance and forgiveness and, and reconciliation? What happened to G. Craig Lewis? I said the end times happened to G. Craig Lewis. Do you, have you looked at the clock? Have you looked at the clock? Do you know what time it is? Do you know that this is the end? Why would I be calling somebody out in the end times? I'm trying to call me into salvation and help people be saved. Why would I be talking about a rapper and a choir director? I've done that. Go look it up. You'll see. But right now, it's the day of salvation. Because this thing is wrapping up as we speak. And the third thing, any teaching of free grace that releases us from repentance is not of God. So there is not more grace for you to cover your lack of repentance. Grace is executed by your repentance. The two go hand in hand. Abusing grace in order to please ourselves will lead to spiritual fornication. What is spiritual fornication? It's the same as natural fornication. It's just done in the spirit. Meaning that you will take on another God and try to mix it and blend it with the God of all gods. That's what free grace teaches. Because something becomes an idol, something becomes a sin, something becomes a habit, and you try to keep that and believe God is going to give you a pass because of what you've been through. Because somebody hurt you, you get to hurt other people? God forbid. Because you found Christ, you can carry old sins and habits along with you. God will understand because of what you've been through? God forbid. Spiritual fornication is joining up with false gods for the sake of popularity, affirmation, and covetousness. When you choose sin over righteousness, you will need the world's approval because you have forsaken God for your own way. When you forsake God, you're not going to find your approval in the Bible. When you do it your way, you're going to have to leave the Bible and find your affirmation on social media. You're going to have to get likes, views, and comments to prove that what you're doing, you should be doing. 
But the sad part about that is when you set yourself against God to do what you want to do, you're responsible for your life. And I'm sorry, at 50 years old, I've learned I don't want to be responsible for my life. I want God to be responsible for my existence. Amen. Even unto death. The Lord gave me a vision the other day about people being martyred for the cause of Christ. And he was asking me, you know, you, you know, folks are coming at you. Folks are threatening you. Folks are saying that they're going to take you down. They're saying they just going to, they will die trying to take you down. I mean, folks are that mad at me for some reason. They will destroy you. And God was asking me, how much do you love me? Do you love me enough? And I told the Lord, unto death. Because what else do I have to live for? I love my family. Don't get me wrong. And I want to be here. But what else do I have? Other than what God has given me. Unto death. 1 Corinthians 10 and 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. True repentance is turning from sin and living for God. Even if we may fall, we must truly repent and turn from it. We must live the life that pleases Christ and not live for ourselves. Our way, how many of y'all can attest to this? Our way has brought us nothing but heartaches and pains in the past. How many of you, how many of you, your way is just trash? Is it just mine? I know some hands ought to be up. I, I ought to hear some horn honks. Your way is just trash. Our way has brought us nothing but heartache and pain. God's way will heal us, deliver us, and set us free from our past. So choose Christ and his lifestyle today so that you can be confident of who you are in these uncertain times. I'm going to read this scripture, but when I was praying this morning, the Lord spoke to me and told me, remember what you know about sound. I taught you about light and sound. So before all this 5G and all this information came out, whatever, I did a video a while back called Lords of Discord, part eight. God took me to the throne room, Elder, and showed me what it meant when he said, let there be light. It wasn't a sun, it was a light spectrum. And on this light spectrum, all frequencies exist. I understand frequencies. I understand vibration and reverb. I understand sound. I understand how we resonate on certain frequencies. I understand the frequencies of sin. I understand the frequencies of salvation. I understand where they are. All of that. I get it. But this morning, God reminded me of something. and He, he told me, he said, you know, sound never dissipates. It may not be audible by our ears, but it doesn't stop. Hmm. So God spoke to me and told me, when you turn that microphone on, and no speakers on, and you speak outdoors, there are people that will hear this later. <laughs> because as soon as it leaves these speakers, it, it becomes audible, and then it becomes spiritual. Yes, it does. That's what sound does. So we're doing a lot here today that's more powerful than what you can see. There's a lot happening. God may have you in your cause, but this sound is uncaged. It's not limited. You're limited by motion right now, but this sound is not limited. It's going to reach somebody. Romans 10 and 8 says, 
But what say it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's the whole message I just preached. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Your heart represents the stuff you're doing, your actions. So if your actions aren't pure, your heart is not pure. And if your heart is not pure, it can't believe Hmm. It can't believe unto righteousness. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. Keep believing. Keep believing. Let your belief testify by your repentance. Keep believing and keep repenting. You mean I got to repent every time I sin? Well, I'm just hoping that your sins will become less and less where you can at least keep count of them. <laughs> if you got that many words, I mean, if I have to do that, I mean, that's going to take all day. Then what? How you, what? I'm going to be repenting every minute of the day. What are you doing? You selling crack. I mean, what is it? No, eventually. See, because that repentance, one thing I've learned, that repentance keeps reminding you of how grave what you just did was and how it doesn't need to be glossed over. It needs to be handled. That's what repentance does. It makes you mindful of your actions. I remember my little sister got saved at a, re at a meeting or revival or something, and Tanya was maybe 12, I was, so I had to be nine, so Andrea had to be like six. We might have been a little older, but I think it was around that age, and she had got saved. So everything she did bad, she would just say, forgive me. And she was driving me and Tanya crazy because we didn't get saved that day. So she'd get around us, ooh, you better ask for forgiveness. Everything we did, you better, you remember that time? You better ask for forgiveness. And then if she did something to make us mad, we'd be like, man, aren't you made this? Forgive me, forgive me. You forgive me? Forgive me, Lord. We were sick of her salvation. We was, you, you, we was hoping she'd backslide because she was making it very uncomfortable in our house. But, that came back to my remembrance because the Bible also says, as babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Then it also says, this is how we come, and I'm paraphrasing, but this is how we come to God as children. Suffer the little children and forbid them not because such is the kingdom of heaven. Some of us need to go back to, I'm sorry, forgive me, Lord. Some of us have gotten too big, too blessed. And we need to go back to that childhood thing that my sister was doing where it hurts and pains us to hurt others everyone bow your heads father god we just thank you lord thank you father god for this unique situation that you've placed us in none of us this time last year could have even thought that we wouldn't be sitting in our plush seats with our elaborate sound system and our Carnegie Hall styled worship service and all of the particulars and the beautiful crown moldings and just all of the wonder, the air conditioning and just the luxuries that we had. None of us could have imagined a year later we would be sitting in cars trying to get whatever we could get from you. But Father, I believe that this is your divine appointment for us and for all people. God, this is your time to show us who we really are. It came to this to show us how much you really matter. So we thank you, Lord, for the wake-up call. 
We thank you, Lord, for getting our attention. We thank you, Lord, for caring enough about us to bring us to ourselves. So I pray right now, Father, that everyone under the sound of my voice would take advantage of this time. Seek you out. Look for you until they find you. I pray that they would take advantage of this time, Father, to work out their soul salvation with fear and trembling. Take this time to cleanse their hands and purify their hearts and not be double-minded. I pray, God, that your adamant believers will truly be adamant so that it won't just be a song we sing, won't just be a word in the dictionary, but, Father God, it will be a lifestyle impervious to what the devil wants. And we'll stand strong in this hour, Lord, even unto death. In Jesus' name, amen.